Welcome to Overthinking Tech. This is the first video in a series looking at how to virtualize all of your network gear. OpenSense, Pi-hole, LAN cache, and Nginx. But to get started, we first need a hypervisor. For that, I'm using Proxmox because it's free and robust. This video is showing the installation and setup of Proxmox, as well as what hardware I plan to use for my virtual network gear. This is mostly going to be voiceover because the original audio didn't turn out. Before we get to the install, let's look at the hardware. I'm running this on an older A320 board with a Ryzen 1600. I'm expecting that to give me plenty of performance. I've got a GT710 in here for my video output. I have a one gig network interface as well as a two and a half gig network interface. For power, I've got this Thermaltake 500 watt gold power supply. Uh, this is tested to do 84% efficiency at only a 10% load. I'll link to the review site that does power supply testing. If you haven't seen that before, I definitely recommend checking it out. For storage, I actually have three SSDs connected to the system. I have a 240 gig Western Digital SSD. This is what will hold Proxmox. I then have this one terabyte a data or 960 gigabyte a data ssd that will hold the virtual disk images for the vms and then lastly a one terabyte m.2 this is only a sata m.2 drive but i do plan to use that for the lan cache and that should be plenty of performance there to get started, you'll need a bootable Proxmox USB stick. I'm not going to cover how to make that in this video because there's lots of videos showing how to make bootable USB sticks. Once you've booted to the USB stick, you'll get a Proxmox install page. There's no need to select advanced options here. We can simply click install Proxmox by hitting enter. After some time, we'll be greeted with the end user license agreement. Of course, I have to tell you that you should read the entire thing before clicking agree. Next thing we'll have to do is select a target hard disk. Here I have three disks installed. I'm going to select the 240 gigabyte one that I want Proxmox to be on. Next we just enter some basic information about where we are so that the time zone and keyboard layout will be correct. Then we set a root password and an email address for notifications to be sent to. Next we'll get to the network configuration page. Uh, there's probably no reason that you'll need to change the host name. I am going to go ahead and change it though. Uh, this is also what sets the name for your node. So if you're planning on running multiple Proxmox nodes, you probably want to change the PVE that you see in the host name field here. I changed it to router and we'll see later that this node ends up being called router. If you want to change the management interface, you can do that. Here the correct management interface has already been selected because it's the only one of the three network ports that I have connected. I'm going to change the IP address to something outside the DHCP range of my router. The gateway and DNS server are both correct in my case, so I'm going to leave those as is. We'll get a summary page so we can check the information that we entered, and then we just have to wait. Once it's done, the system will automatically reboot. Make sure you remove the installation media so that your system doesn't try to boot to it again. When your system starts back up, it should automatically boot into Proxmox and you'll get this login page. Here we can see the IP address I set previously, as well as router, which is the name for this node. Navigating to the IP address we set during the install, you'll likely see a security risk page of some kind. It'll look different depending on your web browser. Here we can click advanced and then accept risk and continue. The login is username root and then password is whatever you set for the password during the installation. You'll get this pop-up that says no valid subscription. That just means you're not paying for support. You still get all the features of Proxmox and can use it forever. From here, we see on the left side that we have our data center 
Your data center encompasses all of your nodes. So if you have three systems running Proxmox, you can set them up as nodes and have them all show up under one data center. Here we just have one node, which I called router, which we see below that. Clicking on router, we'll just see the storage that's attached to it at the moment here. We'll get more into that in the next video when we look at setting up our first VM, which will be OpenSense. At this stage, you should have a ready-to-go Proxmox install. In the next video, we'll create our first VM, in this case, OpenSense. But until then, here's what the finished build ended up looking like.